guys and welcome to another video. Um, today's video is going to be a five day vegan meal prep video. Basically it's born out of the, well me being lazy really because I can't be bothered to go shopping and I've got a few bits in so I've made a five day meal plan based on everything that I have in the house at the moment. Um, I'm going to put together a PDF for you uh, like I did on my last um, seven day meal plan video um, so that you can see exactly how much you need of everything and you can put together your own shopping list based on what you've got in the house and if you have enough of the base ingredients and basically this is going to be all about meal prep I'm not going to film myself through the week I'm just going to show you the meal prep and then I'll show you a couple of the finished products because some of it we're not putting together completely and some of it we are so it's pretty much it um yeah let's get prepping okay so behind me there you can see everything laid out okay this is everything that you're going to need for the five days of food for me it doesn't look like the most amount of veg ever but um please note that this plan doesn't include any fruit any snacks so um i would normally take um some cherry tomatoes some carrots uh sticks um maybe some blueberries, maybe some strawberries, maybe a banana, that kind of thing um, for my snacks at work. Um, yeah, and I've got some oranges this week as well. I've only got nine cloves of garlic here. Um, I do call for 11, but if you notice these two monsters at the front, I mean, seriously, look at the size. So these are counting for two in my plan. So that's these two giant babies. I'm using sushi rice um, because I don't have any arborio rice, which is what you normally use for risotto. I like my risotto quite stodgy, so um, that's why I'm using sushi rice for that one. So you just use whatever rice you want. Um, my couscous is a whole wheat, although I know I don't have it written on my label, but for me, I always buy everything whole wheat, so that's that one. And then my pasta, I'm using whole wheat penny pasta. You can absolutely use macaroni. Um, it is a butternut mac that that's being used for. Yeah, just use whichever pasta you like and that will all work. And yeah, that's basically everything required for your five day meal prep. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is just help ourselves. So I've got my oven on, I filled my kettle and I've boiled it. I've got a chopping board and a knife ready to go in a moment. And the other thing which I've just forgotten now, I was talking to you. Oh yes, it's my key ingredient. <laughs> Whenever I do a prep, I always get my food waste bag ready next to me and then as soon as everything's done I just take this straight out to the outside caddy without even touching the inside one because then it's out of the way and I don't have to worry about it. Right, I've just kind of shoved everything to one side for a moment um, because obviously we need space to prep um, but basically I've tried to design this plan that this is all the equipment you'll need. So you've got one deep saute pan or frying pan. If, you, if it's a frying pan, obviously they're quite shallow. So get the biggest one you can um, or a giant saucepan. And then you need one saucepan. We'll be reusing both of these. And then you just need two baking trays and then a chopping board and knife. So it's really simple. Oh, and we will need a blender. But in theory, this is pretty much all you need plus a blender. Okay, so we're gonna start first of all with the uh, risotto um, where we're gonna prep the base for it. So this is based on a recipe from the One Pound Vegan Meals book. And basically, first of all, all you need to do is chop two onions. Um, we're going to measure out uh, some rice. Now, the original recipe says two handfuls of rice, but to give you a better idea of how much I'm using, I'm just gonna do two cups of rice and that way, I know how much we've used because you're supposed to use the same amount of peas so that way we can use two cups of peas and it'll be nice and easy. Right, once you've chopped your onions, just grab your kettle, pop a little bit of water in the pan, pop it on and we'll get sautéing. While that's sautéing, you can start prepping the next step, which is chop these vegetables. So an onion, an aubergine, and two courgettes. If you've got small ones, just use three. I've left this here to show you real life because I've only got as far as chopping up the courgettes and onion before my onion in the pan is very much ready. 
So at this point, you add in your two cups of sushi rice. Give it a good stir. Let it cook for just a 30 seconds. And then you're gonna add some water. And you want to add about 100 mils of water, so total estimate. Basically, when you're making this, at this point, by the way, you should have the heat turned down. Um, so at this point, when you're making this, you're just going to let this simmer and we're going to carry on doing other stuff, but you need to keep an eye on it and you need to keep stirring. Um, this is how you make a nice risotto. Um, we're also going to pop in a... Okay, that's the stock cube going in. That will dissolve as the uh, water dissolves. But basically, every time you start seeing the bottom of the pan, so it's not looking too juicy, that's when you want to start and add a bit more water in. So I've probably got my heat up a little bit high at the moment, so I'm gonna pop it down a tiny bit. And I think that's actually already ready for the next, yeah, that's dry again. So that's already ready for the next load of water. You don't want too much each time. And I'll just let that go. So while that's going, this should take a bit longer because there's less, uh, a bit more I mean, sorry. I just need to finish chopping my aubergine, I've got this far. Um, and then we'll move on to the next okay, part. Okay, once your veg is chopped, don't forget to keep an eye on this rice. Um, just spray with some, this is like Audi cheap version of Fry Light, but um, yeah, spray with some of this. Uh, obviously you can use real olive oil if you want, you just have to sin it. And then we're just gonna mix it all up with our hands. Okay, spread it all out nicely. Give another little spray. And then we're gonna pop that straight into the oven. Don't forget to keep an eye on your rice. See, look, left mine for two minutes there. And it's ready for the next bit of water. So we on we go. Oops, sorry, that was uh, so close there. gentle. You see this is on quite low. Just let that go. While that's still going, we're now going to prep our butternut squash. So we're now on point three of the prep plan. So we're going to chop up butternut squash, onion and garlic. And that's going to roast as well. Right, I just want to note that I'm turning this right down because it's a bit furious for my liking. Um, it's going through a bit too quickly, so let's curve that. Um, in the meantime, we're going to chop up three cloves of garlic. I'm using one of my giant ones, this is two really. So that's three cloves of garlic, one onion and one butternut. I'm going to pop them all on a baking tray and they're also going to go into roast. Right, I've chopped my onion, butternut and garlic. You'll notice they're all really chunky, but it doesn't matter because I nearly took my oil the ball and this is too dry. So, my water. That was very, very close. I just mixed this before I uh, started filming again and it was actually starting to stick to the bottom of the pan. So, oh, that was a very close call. <laughs> Luckily we've got it. We got it. Phew. Okay, now that crisis is averted. I've just put some more, um, water in as well than what you just saw because it basically sh sucked up all that uh, as soon as I put it on. So yeah, this is really roughly chopped stuff because it's all gonna be blended anyway. So again, just a little bit of fry light, mix it up with your hands, and then we're going to leave space on here to add the tomatoes, keep these separate. Basically, these are gonna be for the risotto when we plate it up. So roasted tomatoes and risotto go beautifully. Right, this is going in the oven now. The reality is the tomatoes will probably be done quicker, so we just need to keep an eye. They should only take about 20 minutes. 
and this will probably be about 30. So just keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on this as well, very important. I'm reboiling the kettle in a second. Right, next thing, you need to pop your two cups of peas in your saucepan. Um, I actually used about two and a half cups because uh, it was just the end of the bag, so it's about an extra half a cup. Then you want to take some of your salt, a big pinch of salt, pop that in, and then we're going to add our water. Pop that on. Go. Um, they're just literally going to cook for like two, three minutes because I really don't like overcooked peas. Um, then we're going to blitz up half. Meanwhile, keep an eye on the risotto. Oh. I'm just going to try the rice. I tried it just now and it still had half it in the middle, which I don't like. I know some people like it like that, so if that's you, you probably want to stop now. But me, I, uh, I like mine mushy. Sorry, I'm a heathen. Actually, mine is now done. So I've just turned the heat off. And that's just gonna sit there, stay in the warm pan. I'm just gonna get the blender out, ready to do my peas. Okay, so half of the peas are in my blender, along with a bit of the cooking liquid that I kept. And then the other half are already in the risotto. So let's blend this. Blended. Is that going to come out? Dunk. Yes, it is. I had to add quite a bit more water to get a lovely sort of puree, but that is that. Right, I started mixing it together, then remembered we need to put in a big pinch of tarragon, so I guess that's like a big pinch, a bit more. It's quite a big pinch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just going to stir all this together and I'm going to add some salt and pepper as well. This is the risotto dished up. I haven't really left a lot of room, um, but basically we're gonna to top that with the tomatoes in a moment. I have, however, got some left, so it seems that my eyes are bigger than my belly. I did consider putting it in larger containers, but these are actually quite big. Um, and like full of rice, I feel like that is gonna be a really filling lunch. So I don't want to go down the road of putting it in a bigger container. So I'm just gonna have an extra portion of risotto, which to be honest, I might just eat for my tea tonight because I haven't planned anything. So yeah, I have this amount left, which is a whole nother portion. So the amounts I've given actually make three portions, not two. So actually this could go in the freezer, I think. I'm sure you can freeze risotto. Um, you might just want to put a couple of tablespoons of water in when you heat it up because um, that's definitely a whole other meal there. And what you need to do now is get your pots and pans all washed up and your blender because now we're on to phase two of our meal prep. It just occurred to me before I did the washing up that uh, I needed to check the veg. So the tomatoes are actually done so I'm going to portion those out now and I think my other veg is still in there need a mix. oven um, now that I've removed the tomatoes and I put it on the top shelf. This one was on the top shelf. Um, this will be going back in on the uh, middle and I'll just give it a quick stir. I think this probably only needs about another like 10 minutes. Um, I think it's pretty much cooked. And then we're going to start the next phase of our prep. Right, for this next part, we're going to start on the bean balls. So we're gonna make the balls and the marinara, and we're gonna try and do that in sync with each other. Um, I haven't made this before, so I don't know how they'll go, um, so fingers crossed. Uh, basically, you need three onions and six cloves of garlic. This one's a double. Um, you're gonna chop uh, these very finely and crush or chop finely these. These you're gonna slice and slice the garlic. Okay, so this is my chop side, this is my slice side. Chop side is going in the big saute pan, slice side is going in the big saucepan. Um, we're gonna make the bean balls first using, well, we're gonna start them first using the chopped stuff. Um, and then we're gonna do the marinara at the same time once this is Okay, okay so in this big pan, this is the chopped onion, 
and that's sauteing in some water. In this pan, it's the sliced onion and the sliced garlic. They're sauteing in water. So while we're sort of waiting for all this to get going, let's get the tins open. So you want to open two tins of black beans, two tins of um, chopped tomatoes, and get your oregano and salt and pepper ready. Right, this is the part where it gets really fun. So these need to go for about um, five minutes to you know, get the onion cooked off. Meanwhile, ignore the mess, um, the veggies are all done. So um, these are just gonna be made with the couscous in a moment. So I'm just gonna leave them. And this one, which annoyingly has juiced everywhere, um, this is gonna go in the blender now, so with a stock cube. So I might as well do that while I'm waiting for the onions to cook. I've just added the garlic to this one. It's now dry, so we need to get the beans in. This one's still going a second. Right, so I'm trusting the recipe here because we're adding two tins of black beans with their water. I guess there's not actually that much water in it. I always find they get this weird stuff at the bottom. But they're unsalted, so strange. Anywho, we'll get those added in. And basically, I think we have to add oregano at this point as well. Right, I haven't stirred yet, but this is sizzling, so tomato is going in. Two tins of tomatoes. And I'm actually going to add oil to this one because it makes such a nice sauce. So I should have really just cooked the onion and garlic in oil to begin with. But hey, great minds think of things when it's far too flipping late. Right, so a big pinch of oregano in there. I'm going to do two because I'm doing quite a large amount compared to the original recipe. Actually three. Oregano is so good. I love the stuff. And then one, two three in there as well. And then we're gonna do salt and pepper. I stupidly left my spoon in the thing, so now it's obviously really hot. But we're just gonna mix all this. Now this one with the black beans in is gonna simmer until the liquid has evaporated. So that's that. This one just basically has to simmer nicely and thicken up. I added in my tablespoon of olive oil. A tablespoon of olive oil is six sins on Slimming World and this is gonna do two portions. Therefore, three sins a portion. That's just for the sauce. The reason I'm cooking these separately, by the way, if you have the um, Vegan One Pound Meals book, um, you'll know that these are actually cooked with the, uh, the sauce is actually cooked with the bean balls. But um, because we're doing it as meal prep, we don't want the bean balls to go soggy. So that's why I'm doing it separately and I'll store them separately and then they'll be nice when they go together. But yeah, let's just keep an eye on this. And then while it's sort of simmering away, I'm going to blend the butternut, which I haven't done yet. I nearly forgot to add a stock cube. So let's pop so that. So you should add a bit of water, not loads, just a bit. In the original recipe, he does say that the uh, black beans, once the liquid has evaporated off, you let them cool and then you form them into balls. Um, you mix them with a bit of oat flour, which we're gonna make in a moment. Well, he says flour. I don't have flour, I only have oats, so I'm gonna blend some, but if you have flour, then by all means use flour instead. So, um, I can't really see how this is going to be blend. Oh. So I was just going to say, I wonder if we need to squidge it a bit. And actually, yes, yeah, so they do squidge quite nicely. I always think of black beans as quite like solid, so that's good. Right, I'm not so worried now. So this um, started to stick to the bottom, and although that looks liquidy, um, it's very, very thick. So I've also been crushing some of the beans with the back of the spoon as I go along. So what we do now is this has to be left to cool. I mean, unless you want to burn your hands, in which case go for it. But first we're going to add the 
oat flour. This will need to be sinned, so I'll double check the sins, but basically that's that. And I'll just mix that in, because that'll just bind it. Right, I've portioned out my two tomato sauces. They can be left to cool now. And also, so I can get on with my washing up while we're at a bit of a lull, I've spread this bean mixture out on a plate so it can cool a bit quicker. It was a cold plate, but it's instantly hot. Um, it's quite gloopy, but it will stick together. Um, it tastes really nice, actually, um, for something simple. Um, it's pretty good. So I'm not sure if they're gonna hold up to frying. That's the only thing. So I'm gonna assess that when I make them into balls. For now, I'm gonna wash up. And as soon as my saucepan is washed up, I'm gonna cook up two portions of pasta. Please excuse the mess. So we're just gonna get the couscous going. Right, I forgot to say, just before the pasta's done, stir in about three quarters of your bag of spinach, so most of it, and then we're gonna add the butternut sauce, and this is gonna be two dinners ready to go. Okay, once the butternut sauce is mixed with the pasta and spinach, you can just serve it up. So this is two portions, and this is gonna be for two days dinner. Right, we are nearly there, I promise. Um, I perhaps underestimated how long this one would take, um, but I've just been doing some cleaning up in between, and we're just gonna finish off and do the bean balls now, and um, prep some veg for tomorrow night's stir fry, and... Oh, make the couscous. Okay, we need to finish off the couscous salad. So I've mixed the roasted vegetables with the couscous that I made, which I may have made a bit too much, but that's cool. It'll fill me up. Um, and I'm gonna add in um, a ton of parsley. You can use any herbs that you like, but I had loads of parsley, so that's what I'm adding. I'm also adding some roasted red peppers from a jar. You can absolutely leave these out or have fresh ones, roast them yourself, do what you want. But I had the ones in the jar, so I've used four, and um, that's what I had left. And then the juice of a lemon. Um, I have a handy extra half a lemon, so I'll put half a lemon's worth of juice on each. And then that's our couscous salad done for three lunches. Right, so the bean balls. Um, basically, I divided my plate into quarters, and each quarter should make five bean balls, as you can see by my um, strange little effort. I think this one's a barely even a ball. Um, they are a little bit gooey, but they might be okay when fried, so I'm, I'm gonna stick with so it. I am gonna fry them in olive oil. Um, this is actually a nice Kalamata olive oil that was brought back from Greece for me by my lovely sister. So um, yeah, I'm gonna fry them in olive oil because I think that'll help them crisp up and stay together better. I'll use one tablespoon, so that'll be six sins. Okay, the bean balls are done. They're they are holding together much better, so I'm, I'm much happier with that. But I've, I know I only used a tablespoon of oil, but I, I really hate frying stuff. I feel like it's just not good. So I have just, oh, that one's not holding together, but I have just put them on this thing to try and get some of the oil off. Um, either way, they're only um, six sins for the lot. This has got to do two portions. If you have some left over, that's cool, just freeze them. Um, and that's that. So we've only got one thing left to do and then we're done, yay. And what we have to do is prep our veg for our stir fry and get our tofu marinating. So you want your last two garlic cloves, your last onion and your last, and your broccoli. And here we have it. This is uh, the veg prepped for tomorrow's stir fry. Um, the broccoli isn't all for the stir fry, some of that will be used in the week. So for the stir fry tomorrow, I'll probably use about half of it. And then the rest that's left have half and half each with your black bean balls and pasta or rice, whichever you decide to do at the time. Um, we've got the onion and garlic together. And then this is the tofu that I've just chopped up. And we're gonna add our sriracha and soy sauce. Um, just to add them in equal amounts, roughly equal amounts. You can add a bit more soy. And don't forget to sim the sriracha, however much you use. I'll be using probably three tablespoons, so mine will be three sins. Put them both in, give them a good shake, well, it a good shake, and um, it'll probably soak up most of this overnight, but um, anything that's left you can use as a sauce on your uh, stir fry tomorrow. Oh my God, I'm done. <laughs> so here we have uh, five days of lunches and dinners. 
Um, breakfast, as I said, is just 40 grams of oats each day and 20, uh, sorry, 200 mils of almond milk. So that'll be prepped every night before because I like to soak my oats in the milk overnight before I nuke them in the morning. Um, with the bean balls and tomato sauce, we'll be cooking the rice or pasta when we have them. So it's up to you what you use. Um, honestly, I'll probably have pasta. I know that makes all my dinners pasta, but I love pasta and I do find it satisfying. So yeah, but yes, I feel like this has been quite an epic one. I was intending it to be easy and everything aches. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go find places in my fridge for all this and go and have a little sit down. Hey guys, so just for completeness, I thought we'll just quickly show the porridge being prepped for in the mornings. I said before earlier in this video that I like to do mine the night before and then it can soak in the almond milk overnight and then when you microwave it in the morning or heat it up on the oven, whichever is your preference, um, it goes nice and creamy. So if you don't want to do this, you absolutely don't have to. But the basic recipe is 40 grams of oats and 200 mils of almond milk and that's why one litre of almond milk will last you a week. Please note if you're on Slimming World that this is one quarter, sorry, one half of one of your healthy extra A's. So you still have like 600 mils of almond milk to play with during the day if you want to use it um, or any other plant milk. So that's entirely up to you. I haven't built that into the plan um, because this is what I've got. Okay, so there is 40 grams of oats and about 200 mils of almond milk. Um, Hi guys, it's day one and I've had my porridge for breakfast. Now I've made a decision um, because I've been thinking about this couscous, I know this is really sad of me, but I've been thinking about the couscous and I'm, I like stuff with loads of flavour and I was just concerned that it wasn't gonna have enough flavour. So to mine, I'm gonna add some green olives and also some capers. Um, capers are actually a speed food on Slimming World, so um, you don't need to worry about those. Olives are a sinned food. They are, you can have eight olives in brine for one and a half sins. So that's really nice, low sin, like treat. Um, so I'm gonna add um, some olives to each of my portions of couscous and I'm having this one for lunch in just a moment. So I just wanted to uh, update that on there because I felt like I had to disclose it. A bit depressingly, the amount of olives that I had left is actually, um, I was gonna put 16 in each portion, but I've only got enough for 12 in each portion. So that's one and a half lots of one and a half sins. So that's three quarters, so that's two and a quarter sins for each of these. Um, so to be on the safe side, probably call that two and a half. I'm just chopping mine up into these lovely little circles um, because they'll go further but you can absolutely chop them in half, chop them into teeny tiny pieces if you want to, do whatever is right for you if you're using them. Okay, so that's my olives on all of them. Now for the capers. Now I'm putting a good tablespoon of capers on each one or dessert spoon, but what I usually do is pop, I can do it with one hand, Oh, not really, but I normally pop some of the juice on as well because it's really yummy. Yeah, so that's my revised uh, couscous salads, and um, obviously they're not mixed in yet. Let's just mix this one in. So um, obviously, as I said, this is an entirely optional step. I will include the olives and capers on the um, shopping list because then, or well, on your item list, because then at least, you know, if you want them, you've got the option of having them. So actually, by the time you watch this, this won't be a surprise. <laughs> I'm just making my stir fry for dinner. Obviously I had porridge for breakfast and my couscous salad for lunch. So I've got my garlic and onion in my pan ready to go and my tofu, which has been marinating all night, um, that's in the oven cooking away. So that'll be in there for about 30 minutes. So you just want some fry light, garlic and onion. And then I did actually find an extra courgette. So with my broccoli, I'm gonna have courgette as well. That's the rest of my stir fry along with the tofu. And then I'm using these um, udon noodles that are from a pouch, just purely for convenience because I'm at my friend's house again. These are one sin each, so my dinner's actually a total of five sins today. I had this much sauce left after doing my tofu, which is a bit more than normal, so I'm quite pleased about that. 
I'll be using it as a sauce for my stir fry, like I mentioned yesterday. My stir fry is basically done now, and my tofu has been in the oven just for sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, so that's nicely cooked too. I've used half of the sauce so far on the stir fry, so I've got some to pour over at the end because it's always better to keep some for the end. I've just poured the last of the sauce over the top so it looks nice and juicy and I'm gonna enjoy this. I hope you enjoy yours. Well, it's beaten me. Morning guys. Today is day four for me, so uh, it's actually Wednesday. And I have to confess, I'm feeling so full all the time because it's been so carby this week. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, this was just a way to use up a lot of the food from my cupboards. Um, well, from my fridge really, and I was trying to obviously bulk it out and make it more carby. I mean, I did have in my mind that I wanted to make it really filling to try and stop myself snacking, but to be honest, all that's happened is that I feel really like bloated and sluggish. So today I'm actually having a little break from the food I prepared. Um, I was meant to be having the second risotto for my lunch today. Um, the first time I had it, I realised that I'd done way too much in a portion. So um, I ended up leaving some and I had to throw that away because obviously it's rice, you know, it's already cooled and then it's been reheated and cooled again. So like, don't really want to keep eating that. Um, so I did throw that, that rest away. It wasn't loads, but it was enough to be annoying. So the second portion of it, I think I'm gonna divide in two and I'll probably end up freezing it. Um, but for today's lunch, I just couldn't face something so heavy. So I cobbled together out of random bits in my fridge, a little salad, which I'll show so you So this now. is what I've brought for my lunch today. I've got my, obviously, oats and uh, milk for my porridge. But, oh, and I got a papaya because I found um, they had a pack of two papayas for 62p and normally um and obviously they were yellow stickered and normally they're one uh, two pounds 75 for two this size um i must say when i see the american ones in their what eight in a day videos and stuff i always think wow they're huge but this is the size that we get in england if anyone's watching in america so um anyway but as you can see this one isn't even i don't think ripe yet really because it's pretty solid so um, yeah, I'll probably have a go at that later. Um, I've got a couple of oranges, I've got a pear if I want it. And then my actual lunch is basically all the random leaves that were left in a bag that I had. I mean, it was pretty old. And also a very small little gem lettuce um, chopped up. And then um, I didn't really have a lot of salad stuff. So there's some cucumber in there. There's like four radishes <laughs> chopped up. Uh, I had a cat and then I was like, what else can I put in? So I had a carrot, so I grated that in there. Um, There's about two thirds of a tin of cannellini beans. Um, so I've just got the rest of the fridge for another day. And then I've, this is um, a Tesco salad topper that they're doing now. So they do these in little bags. Um, and they're like, there's a couple of different ones, but they're like seasoned seeds and there might be nuts in some of them, I'm not sure. But this one has, um, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds and goji berries and golden raisins in it and it's got some kind of and it's called lemon and pepper so um i guess there's some kind of seasoning -y stuff on there so i put um i've used two fifths of the pack because so i think it's 40 grams now i think this is quite a lot of sins i think it's like 10 sins but for the rest of the day i don't actually have any sins planned in um so I've also brought, and I don't know if I'm going to use this yet or not, but this is actually out of date, so it needs using massively. Um, it's not opened, but this um, grain dressing from M&S, I thought that would be a really nice um, complement complementary addition to this because of the lemon and pepper topping and then like preserved lemon and mint dressing. So I'll either use like half of it, which I think, I think this is the real sim value, but I'll double check it before I eat it. So three for half the jar or five and a half for the whole jar. So potentially I'm looking at like my whole day's sins here. Uh, I do need to double check the sins on this grain dressing, so on this um, lemon and pepper topping. So I'll come back to you on that. But um, yeah, I don't mind using my sins on stuff like this. I would rather do that than use them on something bad because quite frankly, I'm feeling not very like healthy, I guess, because I just feel so like full and I guess a bit bloated. So yeah, this is what happens when I try and eat out my cupboard. This is why I always end up buying loads of veg. Um, for tea tonight, uh, it's butternut squash pasta, but 
I'm not sure if I'm gonna have it yet or not because I I just can't imagine eating pasta right now. <laughs> it's like the last thing I want. Um, but I did buy some extra veg like I told you I was going to. I literally only bought three things. I bought a bag of um, runner beans, although they're stringless beans because that's as close as you can get to runner beans for some bizarre reason, even though we're in England in season. Um, so a bag of stringless beans, a bag of normal like green beans and something else. What was the other thing I bought? Oh, a bag of sugar snap peas, because they are delicious and fresh and lovely. And my plan was when I bought them to bring them for snacks and I've totally forgotten, but I don't really need snacks today because I feel so full. Ugh. So um, yeah, so I spent an extra like £2.79, I think, on that bit of extra veg. Um, as I said, oh, and my papayas as well, which is like 62p. So um, yeah, an extra £3.50 compared to what I showed you at the weekend. So. I don't think that's too bad really. Um, I think next week I'm gonna focus on more speed and protein foods. I'm not gonna commit to doing an SP week, but I think I'll do a lot more speed foods and proteins, a lot less carbs, because I'm really, really sick of them. And it takes a lot of carbs for me to say that because I am a carb girl. So anyway, sorry about that long update, but I just thought I would let you know where I am. I really hope you're enjoying the meal plan. If you did find that you had too much food, I'm sure you can freeze some of it. Um, the butternut pasta, you didn't have to mix it together. You could, you know, have the, freeze the, the sauce in different portions. Um, you can definitely freeze that meatball sauce. Oh, I had the bean balls last night and they were, they were tasty. Um, the sauce was quite nice, but I'm glad I added the olive oil because I feel like it would have been quite flavourless without. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about those recipes in that book. Um, I feel like they're going to need a lot of tweaking to make them really flavourful, some of them. But we'll explore that in future videos, I think. Anyway, this is not an Instagram shot. Oh, sorry about my finger. Um, but basically, I'm just having the meatballs. Um, with, on the tomato sauce and then I've just got loads of veg on top so yeah I've got broccoli runner beans and uh, green beans and I'm looking forward to it because I really want some veg okay if you're still with me thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it please hit the like button and if you'd like to see more videos like this and hit subscribe and don't forget to click the bell um, to get notifications whenever I post a new video which by the way um, I'm aiming to do uh, every week now so one video a week coming from me that is my aim from this point forward so I've managed it the last couple of weeks I will be releasing a video on a Sunday evening each week so please stick around for those they will vary between short ones and long ones um depending on what i've had a chance to film so i just hope they're useful please let me know in the comments what will be useful to you what you'd like to see from me um what you like what you don't like um and also if the pdfs are helpful for the meal planning videos i'm sorry about my bird <laughs> um she's there She's a rescue, um, or my animals are rescues, I think I've said this before in videos, but yeah, she can't actually fly, she's a budgie. Um, and she's quite possibly the grumpiest bird um, alive. Um, I had one before that couldn't fly, um, uh, called Coral, and uh, she was just terrified of me. Whereas this one, she goes to me, she's so funny, I love her so much. <laughs> but yeah, um, she tends to talk when I'm talking, which is quite sweet. Uh, but not great for the video, <laughs> so sorry about that. Anyway, I get distracted, but the point is, yeah, let me know what you like, what you don't like, hit subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I'll see you on my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, bye.